Hey there, in this video we will be learning how to analyze the behavior of direct mapped cache uh, using CPU OS simulator. So we are given a program uh, and we have to compile the code and load it in the CPU OS simulator. So I have already uh, compiled and loaded the program in this uh, simulator and if you want to learn how to load or compile a program, uh, I have already made a video, uh, you can just check the description, uh, I will leave the link for that video there. So now we have a program here in this loaded in the memory. Now our next task is to go to the cache pipeline tab. So we are in the cache pipeline tab and then we have to select cache type as both. So let's select the cache type and there are data instruction and both. So we'll select both. And then after that we have to press on the show cache button. So let's press on the show cache button and we see that two windows pop up. One is an instruction cache and another one is a data cache. So now our task is to execute this program by setting the block size to 2, 4, 8, 16 and 32 for cache size of 8, 16, 32. So we know that uh, the block size should always be less than the cache size. So if suppose we are selecting a cache size as 8, then our block size cannot exceed 8. So 2, 4, 8 and if it is 16, then 2, 4 and 16 and if it is 32, like it cannot come up till 30. So let's go to our code, our simulator and let's select uh, block size to be 2 and cache size to be 8. Same here we will do that and let's flush all the data if there is any and after that let's start the program. So we have uh, started the execution of the program and it might take some time uh, depending on your um, system. So here it is complete now and uh, we see that it uh, the instruction cache we see in the instruction cache that there is a miss of 53.8 percentage and in the data cache it is 50 percentage. So now we have to uh, do this for block size 4 block size 8. So let's skip this and let's directly go to uh, cache size 16 and uh, maybe we can try with a block size of 8 in both the cases. Just flush the data and then again and then reset the program and then just run. So the program has again started executing. So we see now that the uh, program has finished uh, simulation, its execution and uh, we see that in the instruction cache the miss ratio is quite low now, it's like 16 percentage. 
So we see that the graph has just fallen down. And if we go to the data cache, we again see here also there is a significant decrease in the miss, miss ratio, which is like 29% now, 29.5%. And we can see the same thing in the graph. So let's uh, go to one more thing and let's increase the cache size to 32 and let's increase the block size to 16. Flush the data, reset the program and then let's start it again. Yep, so finally the execution is done and we again see uh, that the cache uh, miss ratio has like decreased very drastically now it is 5.36% and in data it is like 16.6% uh, so we can see that it has decreased a lot so uh, we can see that as cache size increases the uh, miss ratio also decreases uh, like if we execute with a multiple different combination of block size says we will see that uh, the mesh ratio is decreasing also as we can see in this graph uh, that the cache size uh, as cache size increases the uh, hit ratio is increasing basically meaning the uh, miss ratio is decreasing so this graph represent the cache hit ratio versus block size uh, this is an observation which we can uh, make and we can understand so that's all for this video hope this video helps uh, do Subscribe this channel for more video like this. Thank you.